Hello and welcome to this Crazy Talk 7 final video tutorial for the interactive plugin application templates. So if you've seen the previous tutorials, you know that the application templates are the bone it's they're a bonus content for the interactive plugin, which is an add-on for Crazy Talk 7 that allows you to export the animation data for web design or game and app design. So the application templates are basically these bonus templates that we have created in Reillusion that allow you to quickly and easily um, use these four major templates for daily applications. So you can use stuff for slides, you can use these templates for emails, also for FAQs and quizzes. Uh, and inside the tutorials we showed you how you can play with the JavaScript settings to modify it, your text, your characters, and everything else. Now today we're going to show you how to play around with the CSS um, features inside. So CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. Basically, this is a language that's used to customize the style of web pages. And it's often used for XML or HTML uh, web, pa web pages. HTML and XHTML. So what does it look like? Basically, when you go inside the code, you're able to play around with the CSS coding inside and you can customize the color of the background, the color of the font, the type of font, um, you know, different colors, different layout types, and everything else. So if you go into the folder that we have for the Crazy Talk application templates, you see that we have the slide folder, email, FAQ, and quiz. So I can go inside one of these, and inside the data folder, you will see that we have all these CSS files. So these CSS files are the data that are being called by the JavaScript settings. So for example, remember that we have uh, we had this quiz um, HTML, okay? So basically what's governing this quiz template is the JavaScript settings here. And if I open this with any text editor or, Java, uh, or Dreamweaver, you can see that inside this is what's being called. So it's being, we're, we're calling layout A, font A, and color A. And we have these different CSS files inside that folder, okay, inside the data folder. So I can customize these files to what I need. So for example, let me open this color A CSS file. So we can see the coding inside. So for example, for the background color, I have um, one, two, three, I think that's five Fs, okay? The border color has one, two, three, four, five Cs, or is it six? I'm sorry, this is six. And if you'd like to know what this color looks like, you can do this, see, you can copy this, and you can go to Google. Um, there's a web page that I recommend, it's called w3schools.com. I'm pretty sure there's some other options out there. But I like this one because we have a color picker for HTML. So for example, I can submit my, the color that we have there, okay, and I could submit this. And now I can see that color that that particular CSS file is using is using okay so you get the picture you can play around with this and obviously you can customize your own stuff so let me do something um, let's say if I want to customize my own color what can I do well it's fairly simple you first have to choose where you would like to change this color so here we have question color I would imagine that this one is for this part there so I can change that color if I'd like to. And we can do this by going into our color picker here and let's say generating our own color code. So let's say I want this color here for my question. I can actually copy this code, go back into my color A, okay, and I can replace this like that. And I can save this. Okay, so this is color A. So just make sure that inside your JavaScript setting, okay, you're calling color A. And if I refresh, let me just duplicate this one. If I refresh, you'll see that now I have this blue color, okay, compared to the previous one, which was the dark one, okay? So the same way that I changed the color I can also change the CSS file for the font. And this is again 
found inside my, uh, my data folder. So if I click on the first one, font one, we'll see something very interesting. You'll see that this font is being imported from Google. Okay, Google has a server for fonts and basically this allows um, everyone to grab these types of fonts that we have on Google and that way we can have all the a uniform type of fonts, fonts that will work on your browser and my browser or on your computer and my computer depending on a lot of settings that we have. So it's a nice, it's a good idea to actually choose some of these fonts that you get from Google. And how can you find these? Well, it's fairly simple. Simply go to Google Fonts, okay? And inside, you can see all these different types of fonts that we have. And like I said, you can actually import and call one of these fonts. So if I go back to my font CSS file, you'll see that I'm calling this type of font. But if I would like to replace this, uh, this font with my own font, I can do that. So for example, this is the type of font that we have right now. As we would imagine, this font is, is called Open Sans, okay? Sans Serif, I'm sorry. The family is Open Sans. So I can actually change this if I'd like. I can go into Google Fonts, okay? This is the address, google.com slash fonts, uh, backslash fonts, and I could choose something like this lobster font. So what I need to do is that I can go down here to Quick Use, and this will bring me into the page for this lobster font. It'll even tell me the, the page load for this particular type of font, okay? And what I want to do is that I want to go down here where it says import. And here, I'm gonna get this code. You can copy this code and then bring it inside and replace it. I can also just create another font file, just like I did over here in font D. I imported that font uh, URL. So you see that URL here is the same one that we have here. I just copied it. And the other thing I need to do is basically I need to copy this part here where it talks about the font family. And I need to replace this inside the body right in there. Okay. So if you go to the original one, I need to replace this one with the import one. And then in here, I need to replace the second one with um, with that part that talks about the family. Okay, so this is font D. So let me show you how cool this is. Let me duplicate this one here. Okay, let's just stop it here. And I'm gonna go to my JavaScript settings. So since I have another font file, another CSS font file called font D, and we can see this inside font D, this is a new one, a new one I created a while ago. So I can simply go into the JavaScript settings and I can choose font D and I can save this. And if I refresh my quiz file, now you see that it's calling that lobster font that we chose in Google Docs. Okay, so if you know CSS, um, you know how, how to customize these CSS features, then you will understand all this part here. So we can play around with the color, with the font, and obviously we can play around with the layout. You can play around with the font size, with the width that's wrapping around your template for the header, for the question and everything else. I'm not gonna go too much into, into these details. Um, if you are an advanced user, then you're, you're gonna be very familiar with this. If you're not, then you can play around with this. Um, and you know, the, base, the, the premise of all this is to let you know that you have the ability to play around with the CSS files for all these templates. You don't necessarily have to use the, 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 the features, the colors and the fonts that we chose. You can actually go around and customize them to whatever you need. Great, so that's it for this tutorial for the application templates and the CSS fonts. We hope um, you can use some of these features. And yeah, we have some other tutorials that we did for the quiz, the FAQ, and email templates. So you might want to, want to check out uh, some of those tutorials if you haven't watched them already. And that's it for now. Thank you.